Antenatal hydronephrosis is an important topic, the reason being uh, in the past we used to have uh, patients who present symptomatic with a mass palpable and there is no question on the management. However, in the present, uh, it presents with the ultrasound findings detected in the fetus. So what do we do and how bad is bad? In this talk, we will look at the prenatal diagnosis and counseling, postnatal evaluation and management, role of interventions in PUJO and the role of antibiotic prophylaxis. So when we see such patients, what do we have to counsel? So this is something which is very important. Society of Fetal Urology Grading aid is simple for understanding in the sense grade 0 is a solid kidney, grade 1 is mild dilatation of the pelvic cell system, grade 2 is moderate dilatation with maybe major calluses, grade 3 is a minor calluses also dilated and grade 4 cortical thinning. Now anthroposter diameter is an equally important factor to be considered and we have normal values, uh, cutoff values. In the second trimester it is 4 mm, third trimester it is 7 mm and after birth it is 10 mm. We can also uh, grade the severity of the antenatal hydronephrosis. In a second trimester something more than 10 mm is severe, in the third trimester something more than 15 mm is severe and after birth more than 20 mm epidiameter is severe. Now UTD classification, this UTD classification was introduced um, with a view to help the radiologist. Um, I, it actually made the life for the radiologist simple, but uh, it doesn't split them into multiple subgroups. The risk stratification is based on six factors in antenatal scans, IP diameter, calicial dilatation, parenchymal thinning, ureter dilatation, bladder abnormalities, and oligohydramnios. It can also be applied in the postnatal called UTDP123 and all five factors except the Likert status are used. Now as I said, it is simple to the radiologist, it is easy to reassure the parents and milder ones regarding the resolution and the extent of evaluation or follow up can be predicted well. However, it clubs all the different etiologies of antenatal hydronephrosis and as a treating surgeon, you need to split them into multiple groups. So the need for intervention is also not predicted and it has to be decided based on each diagnosis or severity of the diagnosis. Now in our experience, the need for surgery in PUJO, we studied it based on the epidiameter and we published in the Indian Journal of Urology in the year 2010. When the epidiameter of the third trimester ultrasound was more than 30 mm, all of them required uh, pyeloplasty, whereas if it is less than 15 mm, none of them required surgery. Now how extensive should the evaluation be? So this is something uh, which has been uh, debated over the years. The revised guidelines on management of antenatal hydronephrosis was published in the year 2013 uh, in the Indian Journal of Nephrology. There are multiple causes of antenatal hydronephrosis, the commonest being transient hydronephrosis. The other ones are EPG obstruction, VUR and uh, various other causes. Now our idea is to uh, limit the number of investigations in transient hydronephrosis and avoid interventions at the same time pick up the severe ones like UPG obstruction or VUR. So the guideline 8 of this um, society, Indian uh, Society of Pediatric Nephrology said that MCU is recommended in patients with unilateral or bilateral hydronephrosis with the renal pelvic diameter more than 10 mm or SFU grade, grade 3 to 4. Within 24 to 72 hours, they said that it should be done uh, in patients suspected with the lower renal tract obstruction like posterior valve, whereas in others we can delay it. An MC for infants with antenatal directed hydronephrosis who develop UK was also supported. Now there was another guideline on diuretic renography, moderate to severe unilateral or bilateral hydronephrosis more than 10 mm who do not show me you are. That means all patients are getting an MCU and if they are negative then they undergo a diuretic renography. Now this is something which we looked at. Uh, we is audited this protocol of uh, following uh, MCUG in all patients and the renogram in those who are negative. And we found and we published the results in Indian Pediatrics in the year 2018, which is last year, that in the absence of hydroureter, 89% uh, did not have an abnormality. In the absence of epidiameter um, less than 20 millimeter, 
or with the in the epidermis less than 20 millimeter um, the renogram was negative in 98 percent of the patients so we proposed that we can avoid a vcug in the absence of hydroerector or we can avoid a renogram when the epidermis is less than 20 millimeter so our follow-up protocol is like this APD more than 10 millimeter. If it is a boy with a bilateral hydronephrosis, obviously you are worried about posterior ethyl valve and you need an early MCU, probably within 24 to 48 hours, to exclude a posterior ethyl valve. On the other hand, in the remaining group, if the hydroureter is present, we go for a MCU, which is a late MCU to look for VUR. And if the hydroureter is absent, then if the AP diameter is less than 20 millimeter, we are simply going to follow the with ultrasound. While if the AP diameter is more than 20 millimeter, we will go for a diuretic renogram. Right. So when to intervene in patients with the posterior urethral valve, we are obviously going to intervene straight away. And in those with VUR, it's often delayed up to the age of one year. So these two are uh, very straightforward. Whereas in the case of a PUG obstruction, the question remains as when to uh, intervene or what is the ideal time to intervene. Now record in the year 1999, uh, said that early pyeloplasty can be restricted to a modest number of infants in whom there is impaired renal function. So this is following Cox principle where um, a significant obstruction is something which makes the renal function to lose. On the other hand, when they followed up, they themselves uh, after 11 years published that in those managed expectantly, there is a small but significant risk of permanent loss of renal function. So we published our results on functional outcomes of early versus delayed pyeloplasty in prenatally diagnosed PUG obstruction and this came up in the Journal of Pediatric Urology in the year 2016. So we reported that early pyeloplasty in prenatally diagnosed SFU grade 3 to 4 PUG obstruction leads to significant improvement of split renal function while a delayed pyeloplasty leads to a marginal but significant loss. Mind you this is only grade 3 to 4 uh, SFU grades, not the early mild ones. So when we did an early pyeloplasty, um, the function in mean SR, uh, split renal function improved from 35 to 40 percent. Whereas when we wait for the function to loss, lose and then um, decide on the pyeloplasty, the function may recover a little bit but not definitely to the original levels. So can you predict which cases will lose function during follow-up? and can you preempt the pyeloplasty to prevent permanent loss. We proposed this pelvis cortex ratio in the year 2010 and this appeared in the Indian Journal of Urology. So this is an ultrasound marker. If the pelvis cortex ratio is more than 12, obviously they are all going to lose function and they are the ones who need pyeloplasty. Whereas if it is less than 8, then mm, they don't need a pyeloplasty. Now we have introduced the hydronephrosis severity score in the year 2018 and this was published in Journal of Pediatric Urology. So it takes into account an SFU grade as well as APD, the drainage pattern and differential renal function. So each of them are given a weight of 0 to 4 and when you add them all you get a score of 12, maximum score of 12. So the mild ones are the ones which are 0 to 4, moderate ones are the 5 to 8 HSS and the severe ones are 9 to 12. So we found that you know when the hydronephrosis severity score is 9 to 12 in the severe range, all of them uh, warranted a pyeloplasty over the years. So hydronephrosis severity score could be a useful tool to predict the need for surgery uh, and deterioration as noted in those with hydronephrosis severity score more than 9. Uh, continuous antibiotic prophylaxis, there is more and more questionable role on this and it is not recommended in undilating VUR which is milder ones grade 1 to 2 or a transient hydronephrosis which is SFU grade 1 to 2. So to summarize, transient to mild hydronephrosis is the commonest cause and we can, we can easily counsel these parents positively because majority of them are going to get better. An antenatal ultrasound report is crucial to decide further and uh, if the antenatal scan was suspected of posterior ethyl valve then an early MCU or an ultrasound has to be done to rule out a posterior ethyl valve. Whereas in the rest of them, ultrasound should be delayed to 48 hours and we should always repeat a 4 weeks ultrasound to just make sure that there is no delayed recurrence or delayed appearance of the hydronephrosis. The role of MCU in others, uh, I would say we would, we would just restrict it to 
those with hydrourethra or a UTI. And the role of diuretic renogram only in those with more than 20 mm epidermitral or grade 4 hydronephrosis. And role of continuous antibiotic prophylaxis, no antibiotics in grade 1 to 2 VU or uh, SFU. Now the role of IVP or an RGP or an MCU. This is only in those where we suspect uh, anatomical problems like a duplex system or a retrocaval ureter or when there are rotational anomalies or, or rare situations like a combination of a VUG obstruction and PUG obstruction. Uh, so ultrasonograms should help in choosing the one next best investigation which is an MCU or a renogram and in avoiding an array of radiological investigations. Thank you.